Good morning and welcome to Sunday School. Today is Sunday, June the 27th, 2021. This is Sister Linda Kirkland coming on behalf of the Greater Beulah Missionary Baptist Church where the Reverend Anthony L. Willis Sr. is our pastor. I say welcome and thank you so much for taking the time to click on and come and want to study the Word of God with me this morning. It is another blessed day in the Lord. And guess what? Another awesome, awesome lesson today. Our lesson title is An Amazing Feat. Now, not F-E-E-T, but F-E-A-T. An Amazing Feat. And it's coming from one of my favorite chapters. And it's Matthew, the 14th chapter, the 22nd through the 33rd verse. Yes, there's a lot of um, verses, but you know what? It's an old familiar story that I know you have heard before. So let's jump into our lesson. But before we do that, as always, let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Fathers, once more and again, Lord God, I come before you, Lord God, just to say thank you. Lord God, you are awesome. Lord, I give you the highest praise. Lord, I lift your name on high. If I had a thousand tongues, it still wouldn't be enough to praise you. Father God, I come this morning asking you to just be among us right now as we study, as the person that is listening today. Lord God, I, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that the words of my mouth will be removed and everything that comes out of my mouth will be representation of you. In the name of Jesus, Father God, I pray that your spirit will begin to fall upon me, your weak servant, Lord God, so that I might be able to serve others through you so that I might be able to say something that can change somebody's lives in the name of Jesus, Father God. And then I pray right now for our entire country. Lord God, we need you, Lord God. We say thank you right now, Lord. I pray for the sick and the shut in, Lord God, the people I know, even the ones that I don't know, Lord God. I pray right now for everyone, Lord God. Whatever the situation is, Lord, I pray that they will begin to know you as a part of their sins. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. So listen. Now remember I told you we're in Matthew the 14th chapter the 22nd through the 33rd verse. Now see the 14th chapter of Matthew um, is an action packed one. I love it. It got so much stuff going on in, in Matthew the 14th chapter. It presents the galaxies of different challenges that you have in your life and whom you need to turn to to be able to go through those challenges. Amen. It's just a whole chapter about faith. Ooh, just give me chills. A whole chapter about faith. And I can say that because God has helped me to increase my faith over the last month. Been having a lot of issues at work. But you know what? I need to learn that through trials and tribulations, through the storm, like what we get ready to talk to, I need to be like Peter did. You know, I know I can see God's hands out in it, but sometimes we just get weak and we need a little push. Hallelujah. And I just want to say thank the Lord publicly for blessing me once again, his weak and humble servant. Amen. All right. So let's get into this lesson. Now, despite the realities of our lesson provides us today, it's really talking about faith. We say that the title is an amazing feat. Now, not feet, remember now, F-E-A-T. And I want to make sure everybody understood that feet. Feet definition is an achievement that requires great courage, great skill, or great strength. So that's what an amazing feat is. Having great courage, having great strength, or having a great skill. So keep that in mind as we study today. An amazing feat, F-E-A-T. Now, so when we're talking about that, um, as I was saying, that our lesson provides us with an in-depth talk about faith and how we can model it in our current lives. And as an amazing feat, when we have the faith that we need to experience what God can do for us. Amen. Now, I want you to think about where we just come from in our Sunday school lessons. If you've been with us for a couple of weeks, the first characteristic of faith that produces amazing feet is that it is faith that grow. 
when you can grow in faith, a skill, right? And note the settings of our story today. This is not the first time that our disciples are kind of stranded in a storm. Remember a few lessons back, we see that um, the disciples was kind of panicky because they was on a boat and the storm came. Remember that about two lessons ago? But in today's lesson, disciples have grown up a little bit, grown up in faith, that is. And so our lesson reveals that it is not the beating of the winds and the waves that that made the, the disciples be kind of panicky. But it was more so that disciples was more calm when they heard Jesus' voice. So I thought about that and I said, well, you know, you can think about it and you say, well, you know, maybe this suggests that the disciples has grown in their faith, that their faith was increased. And what worried them before did not really worry them anymore, you think? I don't know, just something I thought about. But the disciples, they did teach us that faith that sees the amazing feats is a faith that's growing. And faith that can be soothed by the voice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So let's get into the lesson. I told you this is a lesson that you have heard before about Jesus walking on water. And then who comes out and say, Lord, is that you? Peter. Peter comes out and he comes out on the boat. And we don't hear the story. He comes out on the boat and he's looking at Jesus and Jesus telling him, you know, come on. He's reaching his hand out to him and he's telling him to come on. And Peter steps out on boat, uh, out on the water. He steps out strong, ready to go, right? And then he steps out and then guess what happened? He felt that wind and he was, he just lost it. Because what? That's what everyone say. He took his what? I off of Christ. So let's just go into the scriptures. Now the scriptures is Matthew 14, 22 through 33. Now there's quite a few scriptures. So we're, I'm not going to read the scriptures, but I want you to follow along with me. Okay. So we're just going to talk about, bring some points out in the lesson today. So as we said, once again, we see the disciples, they in the Sea of Galilee and a wild storm appears, right? And Jesus wasn't with them. What had happened is that, um, Jesus had told him that he was going to go up and pray and that they go ahead and go on the other side of the lake, of the river. And so um, they got in the boat and then they was traveling on the other side. But in, a, in the meantime, what was going on is that um, the, a storm began to flow again. And that was in the middle of the night. And so once again, the disciples caught themselves in the middle of a storm. Right? Think about the storm and what is a storm. And so often we always hear people talk about the storm and going through a storm and, you know, um, how do we come out of a storm? And, you know, a storm can be anything that's kind of troublesome to someone. We all go through storms in our lives. When we look at it at, at a, at a um, physical point, you know, you, you see, you see a storm raging. Um, we're here in Florida, so this is a hurricane season for us. So we get a lot of storms. So when you think about storms, um, lightning, thundering, um, just a lot of water, that kind of thing, a storm. But when you talk about a storm in your life, whoo, I tell you that can be some powerful stuff. But here's the thing. When you are anchored, Hallelujah. When you are anchored in Christ, you could get a little rocky like I told you what happened to me. Now, I was rocky. You know, I was kind of rocky and I was like, oh, Lord, help me. I'm going to need help. And, you know, but what I did was I called, a, 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 called on some of my soldiers and I, I needed to lean on them. Amen. And see, that's what we need to do. We need to encourage each other. And I thank God for the, the women that I have in my life that I can call on and they can encourage me in the Lord. Those are the people that you need and love in your life. Amen. So let's finish the story. So, so the um, storm began to raise, right? And they, it was in the middle of the night. And they knew that they had left Jesus going up to the mountaintop to pray. So they was beginning to worry once again, but... What happened? As they looked out on the water, who did they see? 
they saw the image of Christ, but I'm sure they was like, is that Christ or wait? Is that Jesus? I, I'm not sure. What's going on? So they couldn't believe what they were seeing. So they immediately thought that they must be seeing a ghost or something. And Jesus instantly confronted them and told them not to be afraid. Ha! So the disciples knew he had calmed the storm before. And so they began to not really worry. But, hallelujah, what do you think at this point was on their minds? So Peter... Peter said, Lord, is that you? And I can just imagine in my mind, you know, I have a great imagination, I tell you. And, and, and as I read these scriptures, I was just thinking in my mind that, you know, and I was just seeing Jesus out on the water. And then Peter just just pulling his little, um, you know, I think back then they had those long um, uh, clothing that they wore. So I can imagine him just pulling himself over the boat and get ready to walk on the water, right? And Jesus standing on the water telling him to come. And Peter's looking at Jesus like, okay, well, I know that that's my master. I know that if he calmed the water before, that he definitely can have me to walk on water. But I think that Peter was beginning to say, well, Jesus, if that's really Jesus, I want to come out there with you. You know how we are. So, think about it. It took a lot of faith for Peter to put one foot out. Don't you think? Not many of us even ask that, begin to do that. I even ask Jesus to come out on the water. But here's the thing. As Peter kept his eyes on Jesus, he was able to walk on the water. That not that just amazing? But as soon as the wind began to howl, Peter was distracted, and immediately what happened? He began to sing. But here, Peter's, what you call it, a momentarily um, like of faith almost caused him. But what happened? Hallelujah. Um, our master, Jesus, he called out to him and told him, do not fear but even though Peter was afraid, Peter knew who he could call on out right then to save him. And Jesus, and that's what he did. And Jesus rescued Peter. And he really, you can kind of say, he reprimanded Peter for not having enough faith. And Peter doubt is what caused him to sink. Now, that's what we all have to remember that. It was his doubt that caused us to cause him to sink. And so when we take our eyes off of Jesus, even for a second, we begin to falter. And when we like faith, we too greatly affected by our surroundings, like Peter was with the wind. But when we look at Jesus, it put blinders on our eyes so we can only focus on him doing our turf situations. So we are safe in Jesus. Amen. And you know, we I love to give an example when we talk about Jesus, um, Peter walking out on water and, and, and you so often hear people saying that he took his eyes off of Jesus. Well, I want to present another scenario. Think about this one. You know how we say that he took his eyes off of Jesus, but what I would like to do is give the point about, you know, when you are at your strongest point in life and then things might happen and you might make a mistake. But it doesn't matter that you made a mistake because what? Peter made that mistake when he took his eyes off of Christ. So when you make a mistake in life, it doesn't matter. Jesus is still there willing to still, he still got his hand wide open for you. Think about it. We're all going to make mistakes in life because none of us are perfect. And what we have to remember is that because we are we are Christians saved by grace. God is always there with an open hand for us. Amen. And this is just a great example of what happened with Peter is for us. Is that even though we have strong faith, sometimes it fails us. But why? Because we're human. Amen. So, <coughs> excuse me. So I wanted to make that point. So let's finish the lesson real quick. So Jesus asked Peter, 
listen to this now. Why do you doubt? And I thought about that. If Jesus was to ask you this question, what would you answer? What would your answer be? I know we can all probably come up with some excuses. Why do you doubt? You know, I can talk about Linda. Why did I doubt that the Lord would not carry me through my issue at work? Why did I doubt? Ye, only thing I can say for Linda, ye a little faith. Why did I doubt? Because there's so much going on, I just can't take it. No, Linda might can't take it. Hallelujah. But the spirit that dwells in Linda will give her the strength to go through. Amen. Now, I wanted to make one other point of the story, and that was about um, the, the disciples was um, amazed and convinced that Jesus was the Son of God at that point. And their reaction was to worship Jesus, and how could they not even begin to worship Jesus? Because once again, another miracle happened. And when Jesus does something amazing in our lives, we always want to fall on our knees and worship him. Amen. Now, I wanted to quickly review the lesson right quick. I tell you, time goes by so fast. Now, I, I, I have one question for you, though. We, we're talking about faith here. So faith is central to our relationship with Christ. It's very central to our relationship with Christ. And without it, it is impossible to be in a proper relationship with Christ. It really is. Without faith. It is impossible to be in a proper relationship with Christ. Because it's really the basis of the relationship. Right? We can, we can basically walk on water and do any number of amazing feats if we believe in Christ and his power. Think about that. And I always say, Oh my goodness, when I go through stuff and I, I might be crying at night and can't sleep and things like that. But when things finally hit me and I finally realized that, you know what, Linda, sit down and let God handle this. So often we try to do so much. You know what, sit down, Linda, and let God handle this. And when I sit down and I give it to God, it always turn out. And so I say, you know what? Yeah, this was tough, but I cannot wait. I cannot wait to see what God does because that's how God work. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's do a quick, a, a quick, quick, quick review. I know uh, my time is running out already. So what did we learn today? We learned that Jesus left the disciples alone so that he could go and pray. And he sent them ahead to go ahead and cross the Sea of Galilee on the boat. And then a storm came out of nowhere and the disciples was afraid. And in the middle of the night, they were surprised to see Jesus walking across on the water. And even though they thought he was a ghost, Peter, Peter now, asked to walk with him. And Jesus agreed and Peter began walking on the water too. Everything was going great until what? Peter was distracted. And certainly he begins to sing. But Jesus saved him and rebuked Peter for not having enough faith. Is there any area in your life that is lacking faith? I talked about me. Is there anything in your life that's lacking faith? Meaning that is there anything happening in your life that you feel like, oh, Lord, how am I going to make it through? How am I going to pay my light bill? How am I going to pay my condo? Lord, Lord, Lord. And it's okay. It happens to us. But you know what? I invite you to reach out to Jesus. He is standing right next to you and is ready to save you. Whatever your fear may be, Jesus is bigger than that fear. He wants to make you brave and bold so that you can participate in his miracle that he has for you. Hallelujah. Right around the corner. That miracle is almost here. So this week, I want you to give your fears to Jesus and ask him to make you brave, to ask him to increase your faith. But this is what I also want you to do. Make sure you begin to praise him in advance for what you know that he would do. Thank you so much for joining me again. And remember, keep God, trust God, and go to him. 
He is still right there waiting for you. God bless. Have a blessed week.